question is, yeah, what do you do with super tall? And mm -hmm. when they're super tall, they tend to be more men than women that yeah. are super tall and not very flexible. And yeah. so there are a bunch of different things I think that you can do. And we can talk about the little smaller people as well, but um, we have, these are, there's a bunch of choices you end up with. And right, the infinity bar gives you the most choices because that slides all the way out. Mine doesn't do that here. Um, but with the infinity bar, you know, you can put it all the way down. And then the thing that all the way out, and then you can, you can change the bar position. Yeah. The caveat to that is that, I think we've talked about this before, that if you take the bar into a, a lower position, it gets further away, which is good, but it gets lower, which may not be good for somebody with long legs, because then they're getting that angle of the knee, right? So, let me set this back. Yeah, where would, because I was thinking in like bridging, I don't think that would be so good for the angle and bridging, but in other poses. But I don't know. What do you think about that? Bridging, I'm not, not worried at all. Um, it's more actually the footwork. So let me just show you what happens. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, show me because it's, you know, it's like, because I'm a, I mean, I'm not, I'm kind of, I'm 5'7", so it's like, you know, to think about how my body would be versus someone else's, I'm like, oh, okay, you know, just trying to think about it, yeah. Yeah, so if I come in at, at my, even that I'm 5'6"-ish, almost 5'6", not even quite, so if I come in, let's look at parallel on the toes, for example, what we're looking at is this angle from me to lower leg. Mm -hmm. When, um, when somebody gets has knee issues or when they get too close in right they're going to get more and more angles so if i were to slide myself down as if i had longer legs or was longer torso but right. i'm ending up in a steeper angle and i get a lot more compression in the knees here so that so, should be like a 90 degree in the thighs hi kim no it doesn't have to be okay but this is just um really tight now because i'm so tall <laughs> I'm so tall way down here. Hi, Kim. We're talking about what to do with really tall people on the equipment. Like how to set it up, spring settings and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So if I were, though, just to, just to show you for argument's sake at this moment, if I were to take heels to the bar, right, it mm -hmm. already gives me less angle. So that's one, one on heel, one on toe, right? So... It's a, it's a different angle of the lower leg already, which is a lesser angle. Yeah. So I can, to create more space, I can go to heels because I'll create a little more space. But if I wanted to do everything, I, so my choices are I can bring the bar into a lower position. But again, it gives me a lot more space but I still have this pretty steep angle. So you have to just watch out for that steep angle. I can even come down and I don't look so squashed anymore. Yeah, so it's a, it's a good option. It's just, you have to be a, keep in mind that this is a tighter angle, steeper angle. And then if I go to heels, I have, again, that lesser angle. So a little bit less there. So mm -hmm. one option is always to change the bar position to a lower setting, um, which is the lower bar. If you have just a standard foot bar, it'd be that lower bar. Mm -hmm. If you had um, a ch couple choices, like I have a couple choices on this one, I can choose a few steps. It's just one step lower. And it gives me already more distance from mm -hmm. foot bar to carriage, right? Mm -hmm. So somebody taller might be a good option. Mm -hmm. The other thing to keep in mind, a lot of times if they're getting in here and they're feeling super snug and tight when they're trying to get in, I'll just tell them, just get on, push away. I'm going to hold myself here so I, I seem taller. And then set yourself up in whichever footwork we're doing. And then you just come into a comfortable range. So I don't worry about them coming all the way in. In fact, some of the machines have stoppers. So you could put a stopper further out that would allow them not to come in as far. Oh. And that way you don't get this 
really big compression, except for on that first press when they're just getting set up. Okay. Yeah, it looks like the, um, or I guess the one with our infinity foot bar might have this. Oh, actually, I don't know. I'd have to see on the machine. Yeah. We have some stopper options. have the stopper and they have the opportunity to just stick it in the hole and it will stop the carriage if you wanted to, or you just tell them to not come in all the way, come into just a, a comfortable ring okay. catch. The other, so then um, the other questions were about second gear versus um, first gear. You can, you can definitely move to second gear or third gear or fourth gear or fifth gear. I tend not to do that so much. Um, and the reason is because on well, this machine, and some machines, it only moves the springs. Right, right. Yeah, it only moves the springs. I was thinking of that this morning. And some, and then the springs just, or and then it's the opposite way, you know. Right, so, so if I move the springs, the thing that's happening is um, I still get... Moving the springs or where the springs attach just takes the pressure off. So it takes, the pressure doesn't come on as soon, mm -hmm. right? So I don't feel as much compression coming in. So somebody's complaint was, I feel a lot of compression when I go in. You could move the gears on a machine that just moves the springs and they would feel a lot less compression on the way in. So that might be okay for some people to take pressure off. But it doesn't solve the problem of distance. Yeah. Unless you have a machine that has a stopper that moves, or some of the machines that um, they move the whole thing moves further away. So you're just basically moving the whole machine further away from the foot bar. That could be an option as well. On this machine, I have the option to move the stopper independently. So I can grasp my stopper and slide it along. There you go. And I slide it out. So I can make it so the carriage stops here. Um, so I could essentially do that and then use my springs and I have a lot more room now. Mm -hmm. Right? I've got way more room now all of a sudden. Yeah? Mm -hmm. if, if I were to be here, I really, if, if me, my size, this is just so far away that I don't even get anything out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but somebody tall would still be way down here with this setup and still get a good workout. You just have to remember that you have also have limited space above, right? There is a limit to how far out you know, go. So you don't want them going up and crashing in every time either. But I think you'd probably be okay. Okay. And so the ones where you can move the stopper uh, and the gears, that might be really helpful as well. Okay. And a little bit of trial and error. You want to see what their body's doing. And you, and then, so this is a good option if you want to keep the foot bar up all the way too, so that you don't have to worry about the knee angle so much. So somebody with hurting knees, I don't like putting the bar lower. I like having as big of an angle as possible. So I could give them the room with the springs and with the stopper and then keep the foot bar in its traditional position and maybe still have enough room for them to not mm. feel squished. Okay. Does that help? I know there's no definitive answer. Yeah, that helps. Um, definitely for, you know, the, the footwork um, and thinking about, you know, bridging or stuff on the supine. And then how would that translate for something like uh you know, swimming prep facing the, the foot bar with the foot bar down, what what kind of situation would I be looking at there with a very tall person? Swimming prep, so they're just laying on the box, you mean? Yeah, they're laying on the box and, you know, swimming prep, maybe one hand on the the grip, the grip tape part. I just wasn't um, sure what to do there. Yeah, to have enough yeah. room so they wouldn't be scrunched in their shoulders. I think, um, yeah, that's a good question. I think, well, again, on the infinity bar and some bars like this one, they come down in front. So yeah, uh, yeah right. The foot bar obviously be down, but 
where they their it, arms are it, so long where they put their hands. They put, I usually have them put their hands on the foot. Oh, there. oh, oh, I see. Yeah, I think it was on the floor. Okay, yeah. So instead of having hands here, I would have them go hands here. It doesn't look right on me because I'm not big enough. But mm -hmm. you could go hands all the way out here instead. And then they have lots, then they have lots of room. So yeah. you could have them here and then they're working from here. Gotcha. Okay. Just to yeah. give them more distance. Okay. And, and then sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say then since you were in that, you know, prone position, but I was thinking then about, uh, you know, elephant, like for a tall person who is having, you know, they feel like they can't get to the foot bar. They're kind of making claw hands, trying to get more length in their arms. So, yeah. so then I would push the carriage out, push the carriage out. Okay. Mm, just keep it away. Don't let it come in as far. So stop or it or push it out or move it to second gear, whichever way you can get the carriage further away from home. Okay. So not in lieu of putting the foot bar down. And then, yeah, that's a lot of things, I guess, to think of kind of how I'm going to, how I would design a program if, you know, the class, if there's a full class and, you know, would I choose to do that pose versus not as it, you know, kind of like how disruptive is it going to be and just the flow of the class so it's um it's, you know what I usually do is I just go I tell everybody what settings to put and then I go to that tall person and mm -hmm. I set it up myself the way mm -hmm. I want and the other thing with a really tall person on elephant is that they have a lot longer to go a lot further to go so you may need to bring the bar all the way up if you can and the highest setting that you can get the bar up mm -hmm. and then take the carriage away. So then I can, again, move my gears like forward. And my software out. So then I create this space, but I also created height for them because they're so tall that getting all the way down there from those long legs it is a lot yeah so okay awesome. the other thing is i mean you have the same issues right if somebody has really tight hamstrings that's going to be an issue so then you'll have to decide if it's the right exercise based on that okay. uh, that, that's but, a good point showing me sort of the order of operations because yes, you have to think about that. Yes. So I would probably just be the one to go and if they're in a group setting, I'd probably be the one to do the adjusting for them and say, let me just put this up and I'm going to push you back a bit to give you some more room. Totally. Okay. That's, yeah, that's, that's super helpful. Yeah. On the contrary, somebody who's tiny, right, we might use this same bar setting, but we're not going to slide the carriage out, right? And the reason for that is because that's going to bring them closer, right? So if I move myself back, and I spring myself here, right, versus having the foot bar out here, this is further away, right? than it is if I bring it up here. Now I'm closer. Mm -hmm. So you, for a small person, you might also bring the foot bar all the way up to get them settled. Um, if you, the other option you mentioned in your email was to put the roller behind the heels, right? You could do that as well. Mm -hmm. Or on the infinity bar, you can actually move the whole bar closer. Mm -hmm. instead of that. That's true, yeah. Okay. And then um, what about the people using um, hands, hand, hand loops? Because I feel like I would want to make it shorter in that situation. At least for me, when it's full, it's on at two red springs and then they're like, oh, I want to change to the hand loops. I'm like, I feel like I should have done that before, you know, like spring it, put the hand loops on, then spring it because it just seems really like challenging that way. You know, I don't know if I would change the length of the loops. Oh, okay. At all. Because I don't think it makes that big of a difference. 
Okay. It just, yeah, I think it, as a teacher, just trying to get the hand loops to them, you know, because it's it's like you have to pull more to get them on the, the, the spring. Oh, I see what you're saying. To get the, them on the pegs, yeah. You sh so if your foot loops are set up or your handles are set up at um, your shoulder rest before class, mm -hmm. you could just have them. I usually have them use them in a group setting. I'll have them do it themselves. And it's kind of anti, I was taught not to do it this way, but I do have my clients do this way, just push out themselves and put the foot in, right? And so you, you, tall or small, they should be able to do that pretty well. It's not that that hard. Yeah. And then they can take the weight and then they can take the other leg in. Okay. But I for the no putting the hand, the hand holds on the, you know, the hand, the hand strap, the one with the bar, the specific hand. Sorry. Oh, you mean the handles? The handles. Yes, the handles. <laughs> yes, thank you. The handles, yes. So what about the handles? Sorry, I, I'm sorry. Um, just, I feel like that um, they're just shorter than the short loops. And I feel like when somebody is asking, oh, I wanna put the handles on and it's sprung on a two, it's like for me to get them the hand loops, it's, I have to pull farther to put them on the, the pegs. Yeah, so you, in a group setting, I wouldn't mess with them. I just put the handles on and say, go for it. Okay. So you have to stretch. If we, if I'm using the handles themselves, I'll set them up uh, on the pegs instead of on the shoulder. So I need to put my peg in. Sorry, because I've been switching back and forth a lot. Um. So I could take my handle. And so, so if I've got my foot loop situated properly here. Mm -hmm. But then I want to switch. What happens is it no longer reaches over here. So I usually just set it up here. Yeah. No, it just seemed even as a stretch. Like I had to pull a lot to even even get it there. Um, with this. Then maybe you just too. release the rope. Uh, just release the rope and set it on the peg, and then. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. See these little these little tips. Good. Good to know. Yeah, just release the rope. Okay. And I'm surprised at how much trouble people have releasing the ropes and attaching the ropes. It's really simple. It's so I, simple. I know, I know, I know. So, I mean, I'm laughing, but because, but yes, it's it seems like a, a foreign animal to them. Yes. Yes, but I think I think it's worth in classes. I actually in the beginning of the classes, I would, I take a minute and make sure they know how to do it themselves. I'm like adjust your foot loops, adjust your handles, like get it set up. How do you do it? You pull the rope up and it slides out. You put the rope in and pull until you want to stop pulling and it's all set. Like it's just yeah, that's that's a good point. I think that I'm going to start incorporating that be it more. I mean, I do it sometimes in the beginning of the class, but sometimes I just get too busy that I don't I don't think of that. Um, you know, just so it's not we're doing arms and abs and it's like someone's like it's two different lengths like what you know then it's it's challenging to kind of like stop and it stops the flow so yeah that's that yeah. thing for reminding I need to be reminded of that thank you yeah yeah have them work a little bit <laughs> yeah. yes so yeah well I think I yeah I, that, that those are great um I was just curious about that those whole setup things um and I don't, I don't know uh, if I have any like more questions, you know, maybe if it's like one-on-one, -on -one, maybe a Cadillac and we're doing footwork and the, the bar, you know, I might, I'll probably come back to you with like, well, you know, uh, I, I probably, I guess would wait if, you know, if, if I was going to do more sessions with this person, I would want to know, cause probably the first time I might opt to just go to the reformer because it seems like it would be more specific on you know, the, the Cadillac with the foot bar going out, like would I go higher, lower, something like that? Yeah, so the Cadillac reformer combos are not ideal for the tallest people. You're gonna put their yeah. feet in the straps. Yeah. That, those are the people that might hit the poles. Yeah. They're super tall. Yeah. Um, because they're so tall in both directions, right? So I don't put my tallest people on the combo machines if I can help it. I put them on the reformers, but like the flat reformers, if we're using the reformer, like yeah. mine right now. Okay. Um, for the Cadillac, not much changes. 
it pretty okay. much stays the same. You just have to remember that they're longer. So the spring tension is heavier by yeah. the time the legs are extended. Yeah. So keep in mind, but they're also bigger people. So a little bit more spring resistance might not be hard for them. Yeah, they're used to working with that, like gravity. Uh, right, well, they've got, usually they're taller, they're just bigger and heavier. And so yeah. they have more weight that they push normally. So it's usually not that big of a deal, but just keep that in mind. If you normally put the springs at four, you might put them at three. Gotcha. Yeah. Instead. Yeah. So, so many, yeah, so many, so many moving parts to not only learning the exercises, but then, you know, all these little, you know, finer things, you know, just to get more dilated and more. So that's, that's really super helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah, very welcome. Yeah. Kim, Genevieve, do you guys have any um, questions about the equipment or anything? I'm curious if you had any people like that you were unsure of how to set them up or anything. Um, no, I mean, I've been lucky enough to just have like the, the tall guys come in, just one of them. So I've been able to put them on the infinity bar. Yeah. Um, or like well, I did have your client, the one that you, you see mostly Allegra and the, another one. So I, I put your client on, but I did lower the bar because it was too close in for him. Yeah. But, yeah. No, I don't know how that, I seemed okay on the angle of his knees for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can always, it's always okay to say, just come into a comfortable range for somebody who's really tall. You don't have to adhere to sort of the usual come all the way in, go all the way out thing, right? So you can have them just coming in for a comfortable range and that would be plenty. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Anything else that you guys specifically wanted to cover? No. No? Okay, so what I promised you was a re review of TRX. Does that sound, still sound like a good idea? Mm -hmm. We'll watch. Yeah. You're going to watch? You're going to watch while you remember. Um, I wish I were in the video is, <laughs> to try this out. My um, TRX is inside the house. So I'm going to drop off this one and I'm going to rejoin on my iPad in just a minute when I'm inside. Is that okay? Are there any particulars that you were curious about or should I just take you through a few things that are like just kind of a re refresher course? I would be wanting more of a refresher course, uh, but that could be boring okay. to Kim and Genevieve. So yeah, no, it's fine. Refresher, refresher. Yeah. Okay. Refresher. Okay. So one of the most basic things to start out with on TRX are really just the rowing. And the thing that people worry about with the TRX is that it's so hard. They feel like they can't do it. But the thing is you can make it easy too, because you can actually change the angle of the, where you're going, oh shoot, this is going to slide. I'm going to go this way. Then you can't see me. Hold no, on. We can see you. All right. So if I don't want to work too hard, I just stay more upright. So here, for example, I don't have to lean back very far and I can just pull here and slowly release, right? So just taking that control. As I get more advanced, I have two choices. I can lower my body down and this can get pretty challenging pretty quickly. The lower I go, and I can also choose to lower the, the loops to make them lower. That's gonna make it more challenging because now I can get really low here. <laughs> I'm sliding. <laughs> I can get really low and then I'm really working, right? So depending on where those feet go, the further up the feet are, the less work I'm gonna do. So I can come back to this sort of posture where I, I'm not working that hard. So the rowing, I love the rowing because it, it's back body, right? So you're just rowing back body, you're getting that active, which is a great, great postural thing as well. So that's kind of the most basic. Then usually I go from there into a two hand hold. And then if you wanna advance them, they can go to that side one. I'm oh, sorry, I'm gonna make these shorter so you can see me. 
All right. So I can go to the side one where I have the arm here and I'm just gonna lean away and pull back in. Right, so I can stay, again, the further away I stay, the less I work, the, the further down I go, the harder this gets because the more body angle I have to pull. Yeah, and then you can do that on both sides. So those are kind of really basic rowing, side rowing and back rowing. The other most classic exercises on the TRX are the bridging exercises. So those ones, the feet go in and classically TRX is done oh, with terrible. tennis shoes on. Yeah, I understand. So classically done with tennis shoes on. Oops, this is too high. You want to drop it down so that it's pretty, pretty low. Um, and then you're going to go heels in, feet flexed. So the thing to remember here is it's best to have the straps straight down to where the feet are. If I go away, so if I pull away here, this gets a lot harder already because the straps are angled towards me. If I'm having a hard time, I can go down further this way. With the straps going away from me, it actually helps me a little bit more. So it, it helps me come back to neutral more. So if somebody's having a hard time, you could have them a little bit with the straps that direction. But ideally, a good starting place is to try and have them pretty vertical. So for all the bridgings, we've got a ton of bridgings where I can roll up. I can go both legs out and in, right? I can do one leg. I can do alternating legs. I can hold and just do one out and in, right? So we have all different kinds of bridging work. And what I love about the TRX bridging is I really feel like it gets right up in the sit bone up at the top of the hamstring, which we don't always get with other ways of bridging. So if they're having a hard time keeping their feet in the straps, the reason for that is when people push with their toes. If they push with their toes, they come right off. If they dig the heels in, they don't. So usually I set it right in. So they're really, it's really dug in at their heels. And then I ask them to keep their feet flexed and press down with their heels to come up. Then there's no, the straps are not coming off this way, right? It, they stay on a little better with tennis shoes. So if somebody's really having a hard time, I'll have them put on tennis shoes, but I prefer to do it without. Yeah. So that is kind of the classic bridging. We've got rowing bridging. Then the other one that's really well known are the planks. And the planks, you basically have the, toes going in or the balls of the feet going in and <laughs> sorry oh, on these, um, it looks like your straps feel re look really high towards the ceiling mine are high because we have a really high ceiling okay. so um you could come up this is a little higher than i would want them for the planks because usually i measure it so that their knees are still on the floor, but here I have to lift up a little oh, bit yeah. to get to the plank. <laughs> that is a problem, yeah. It's, I'm almost there. So usually it's knees on the floor, but so I'm a little bit higher than I, I do. And then I'm gonna, but I can still go into my plank here, right? And then I can just hold, or I can do my knees in and out. I can do one knee. I can do side, right? I can do one side and I can do rotations and I can do pikes, right? What's that? <laughs> Sorry, Genevieve's trying to finish her, their office and um, oh. you have Cheryl's um, no open still. From yesterday. Yes, I do. I can finish that in a minute for you. <laughs> Sorry for multitasking. Just be we're, we're not multitasking. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. 
Yeah, so that those are really nice exercises to do and not that um, not that hard. They're they're harder obviously than on the mat, but not that hard for somebody who's going one step beyond for the planks. Um, and then the other thing that I did a lot of with the TRX is add in kind of the ab work that we do with support. So for example, if somebody has a hard time holding tabletop, you could use the TRX to help them. So you could have them. So you could have them with heels in, right? And then I could work on single leg stretch and in really concentrating on not having them press down in the straps, concentrating on having them try and use their abs and float the leg as much as possible. But this way, it takes just a little bit of weight off of their leg so that they can maybe hold tabletop or maybe they can activate their abs. You could do double leg stretch the same way, right? Still trying to get this center on, but now you've just taken a little bit of weight off of their off their legs so they can actually hold without gripping in their psoas or without arching their back. So yeah. That's a great tool. It's hard though. I mean, unless they come into an upper ab curl, I think they feel like they don't, aren't doing anything. It's really hard to get. It's been hard to get them to connect. Yeah. So maybe you have them hold and tell them to try and lift their feet up off the strap, right? If they try and lift their feet up and I'm working really hard right now. Mm, okay. Yeah. So not letting them press down. If I press down, I don't do anything. And pressing down, I could do this till three days from now. Right. But if I'm holding and trying to lift that leg, see, I've got the strap pretty light. Yeah. Over exaggerated. Then, um, then I'm doing the work. Right. So okay. it's not about, it's not about pressing down. Uh, so you could add the upper ab curl, but I would still ask them to try and hold the weight of their leg and just let the strap help them a little bit. Okay. Right? That's so the, the strap's just yeah. helping them a okay. little bit. Yeah. That's it. So I'm working pretty hard there. And you could go through any of your exercises, right? And you could really work on the form and perfecting it with them uh, this way and taking a little bit of weight off. Okay. Yeah. Also, um, trying to think of other not that hard exercises to do with TRX. Um, ones that I really like, I like the kneeling Superman, Superwoman, where the straps stay at about belly button height, so probably a little bit lower than where mine are right now. Um, but then you just work on zipping up and going slightly forward and back, right? Forward and back. And then if they get strong at that, then you can have them extend the arms and really work into the Superman or Superwoman, right? So it's a really nice one. If they get strong enough, you can come up and straps would stay basically Zena, belly button. Zena, yeah. second, um, for that last one, um, what what would you cue and that's like neutral spine keep your shoulders in the sockets mm -hmm. kind of because you don't like yeah. the hyperflexes that would yeah that. hyperflexes you got to be careful you don't want that you want to keep this all zipped up okay. and they're going out right so i'm going out and i'm keeping connected shoulders aren't reaching over right i cut them down in their sockets and then i'm coming back in to come back in i'm almost pressing down to come back in, right? So I keep those shoulders down as I go. And I also have to pick up here, otherwise I wanna hyperextend in my lower back. So I almost have to feel like I'm tucking my butt to keep me out of my lower back mm. a little bit. That's helpful. Otherwise I don't want them flat back, I just don't want them arching, over arching. Yeah. And then um, coming up to standing, the same thing, if they get advanced enough, and then you would set it up so that the handles are about at their belly button as well. And then you could do the same thing, starting with elbows bent, leaning forward and coming back. And this one, if I start here right in neutral, can be quite difficult, right? 
I can really get out and come back and really work for that. If I wanted to make that easier, I'm just gonna turn this way so I don't slide. Um, if I wanna make it easier, I can walk forward, take up some tension, and then I'm going out and back with less pressure. Right, so this makes it a lot easier. And then one of the favorites that I, I like are these where we take it underneath the arms and you take hold of the handles and then I just cross the loops. And I'm just fingertips in the loops just so they stay together. And I put this right at my hips and then I really don't have to do much with my hands except just hold my fingers on those loops. And I'm in this position here. And so I can go into little squats, front squats, supported. So little mm -hmm. front squat mm -hmm. supports. I can also go into calf raises here, just calf raises. I can go into kind of prancing. Bigger for a second so we can see. I can see your arch better. Yeah. Right. So these are all really nice ways to work on. Um, I could work on single leg lift. Right. All ways to work on posture stability. I'm having to work to keep myself still while I'm moving. And do you while have I'm your hands on. crossed in front of you? Sorry, I just adjusted. So our all hand. I did was take the handles. I'm holding the hand. These are under my arms. Take the handles, cross the loops, and just tuck my fingers in the loops. And then I, I'm only really holding really lightly there. And I don't really have to do much. I just have to keep a finger here. So like I just have one finger on it to hold it. It's not a lot of work. Yeah, because I think yeah. before all these exercises, we had learned with the arms kind of here. Like yes. This this one, so there are these ones, right? These are, um, you can do the push-ups here. Yeah. Right, there's the elbow in push-ups, and then there's these push-ups, mm -hmm. elbows out push-ups, which you can do. And again, the further back, uh, the further forward I go, the easier this gets, because I just have less, I have more angle and less body weight. So it, you could make it quite easy for people to do um, because of that. But yeah, these ones are like this. This other one I put back here around. I then take these cross in front fingers in and then I can lean on it, right? And I can decide how low to go. I like to go pretty low for the squats. I stick my butt out and I just squat, press, right? Squat, press. Those are pretty nice. And then I can go from this into that transition lunge. So now I'm going to take the weight in my feet, take my hands here, and then I'm going to come up into this runner's lunge, right? And then back, runner's lunge, and then back. Yeah, so this is a really nice one too for balance, stability, uh, connecting the body. That's a really nice one. And then the others are get harder and harder, right? So then we have the underneath here with hips raising up. Hey, Nico, oh. I have a partner now. That's a good downward dog. Hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're gonna go hips up here, and then you can pull up here, which is a really nice one, but quite challenging. Yeah. So that's a really nice one there. <laughs> can you see now? Yeah, I can. Um, and I think, I mean, I think those are the really the basics. Uh, I did a lot of work trying to put ab work on there, more ab work. So let me just drop these down. You bring them pretty low. And then I was working on having them lay down. Legs and tabletop. And then having them work on that lat connection here. So pressing down to extend the legs up and release. 
pressing down, lift and release a little lower with the arms would be better here. Um, I don't have that capability right now. Pressing down and up. So I'm getting that down to lift up, kind of feeling drop through the belly. Um, I had them also doing single leg lowers, resting one leg up and taking that other leg into single leg lowers. Right, so just wrapping it on the strap and then to give one leg support so that I could focus on working the other one. Also single leg circles I was doing here with one leg supported. So, uh, because I really like to teach them <clears throat> the support and then uh, the isolation, right? And give them some support to do it. And then I actually have them doing hundreds here, right? And then pulsing, the straps in the studio come down to here. So that was a little bit better than having them way up here to do it, but you could do that as well. Um, and then for those who could, I actually really love, I'm gonna turn a little bit for this one. I really love the rollover for those who can press down and go over and then roll back. There's a lot of resistance you can create in your body using the strap in this way. Pressing down and rolling. So there's a very few that of our clients that could actually do that one, but it's a really nice one if you guys want to try it. Um, it's a really nice connecting feeling when you do that one. Dana, just real quick, um, the, just uh, you were a little backlit, but can you show, maybe you could bring the camera closer to show that hand position for the holding where you had it under your arms with the one finger thing? Yeah, I can. Okay. So I take this strap and then I go under my arms like this, right? So the handhold is this one. If I wanted to say handhold, I could do this handhold here and just hold that plank. And then I can take these handles, which are still under my arm, and I just cross them in front, right? So I'm just taking them to, and I'm gonna just put my fingers in the loop. And that's all that it takes. I take my thumbs off the handles, everything. I just put my body weight here, but I've just got a finger in the loop here. So I even, like it just stays really with just one hand, one finger. So I don't have to do a lot of work to put it. You don't wanna put it right on the stomach because then they don't feel good. Right, but I can put it just a little bit lower. So I'm on the hips a little bit. And then I just can hang out here. Okay, so it's just, so it's, it's in the thumb, right in the thumb there, the thumb groove. The one hand um, is holding. I don't hold with my thumbs, I just hold with my fingers. Oh, oh, okay. I see. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I'm just holding with my fingers on this side, this loop, and on this side, this loop, right? Okay. I could, I don't even oh, okay. have to gotcha, cross gotcha, them. I just, gotcha. okay, yeah. It's just the yeah. a little weird, yeah. Okay, yep. Thank you, I can yeah. see that. Thank You're you. welcome. I'm excited to try these Yeah. Now. Yeah, you should try them out. Yes, and then tell me a few questions. We can go over them. There's also side planking, right? There's a lot, we can put our feet in, go into forearm and do side plank. I mean, that's a really, I really like that one. Um, really hard but yeah it gets harder and harder right yeah so um maybe too hard for most but mm -hmm. you could um, work on getting the, and then the lunges too which lunges oh just lunges where you squats. put your back foot into the oh yes <laughs> and do the lunge that way yeah yes so here we can go oops i'm gonna lose it into side planking Ooh, there. Yeah, it's pretty right. good. Yeah, and the lunge that Kim's talking about is the single foot lunge, right, building up. So squats first, I would say for sure. And then when they get those squats, you can have one foot back um, and then you can work on, is this the one you meant, like a single foot? Yeah, it's really thing. hard. It's a lot of balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely advanced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you've got all your squats and everything else that you could do. Squats are really nice with TRX mm -hmm. because 
you can really get back. Um, you can really get, let me find the right position, sorry. Here we are, just set up. So I can really sit back here and have my shoulders and hips right in the same line, right, which is really nice. So, and then I can stand up, right, just right there, keeping the shoulders and hips mm -hmm. back. And you can work them like we do with the springboard, right to the floor. So I can go all the way down and work my way up. Yeah, so those are great. And then for those that are really strong, I mean, you can do really fun things like um, having them take the straps up and then you can have them uh, hold here, right? Just hold and even with weight on the feet or if they can, you can have them lift and then just lower their way down, right? That's great strength, very safe. And for those people who need a challenge, you know, we have some stuff we can throw at them where they're really having to pick up their body weight. So, and I think this is nicer than the pull-ups on the Cadillac. Mm -hmm. It's easier and nicer. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the, the spacing is better. The pull-ups on the Cadillac, I feel are super wide. So yeah. they don't make it really hard to activate. So, yeah. All right. All right, give it a try. Thank you, Zaina. You're welcome. Have a good day, you guys.